Changing mixed fractions to improper fractions. Well, first, let's just review what a mixed fraction is and an improper fraction. It's pretty basic. These first two examples are mixed fractions. They've got a whole number part mixed up with a fraction part. Four and two-thirds, eight and three-sevenths. Now, an improper fraction is either a fraction where the top and the bottom number, that's numerator and denominator, are the same, in which case the value is 1, or the top number is bigger than the bottom number, in which case the value is greater than 1. So another way to think of an improper fraction is a fraction that is equal to something 1 or greater. So first let's take a look visually at what it means to turn a mixed fraction, in this case 2 and 1 fourth, into an improper fraction. I can't draw, so I'm going to use these fraction blocks and visualize first 2. And 2 means the same thing it's always meant. Two whole, let's call them candy bars. Lovely blue, what would that be? Blueberry candy bars, if there is such a thing. And we've got two of them. That matches this whole number part. There's also a fraction part, and so I'm going to put a 1 fourth at the end. Now to turn this into an improper fraction you just have to ask yourself the question how many fourths are there in a whole? And it should be obvious that if you had a candy bar and you divided it into four equal pieces each piece would be a fourth and if you ate four of those fourths you would have eaten the entire candy bar. However you should really learn to share. Let's go ahead and divide the second candy bar into, I don't know why the candy bar turned from blueberry to lemon, but let's just roll with it. There's four fourths in the second bar as well, so that makes four fourths here, another four makes eight fourths, and we've got this one fourth already in fraction form. I'll just move it down here. And you can see that two and one fourth is the same thing as nine fourths. Okay, so how do we do this a purely math way? Well, most people use this visual to remember how to do this the math way. And I'll, I'll illustrate it with the blocks one more time just so it's clear why this works. But we draw the arrows. We're going to go around clockwise. We start at the denominator. That's 4. And the first thing we do is we multiply. So the top of our fraction is going to start with 4 times 2. And then when we go from the whole number up to the numerator, what we're going to do is add that on. Remember that 1 fourth which is sort of left over at the end? So we're going to add that 1. But the whole time what we've actually been adding is 4. So we've been adding up how many fourths there are in 2 whole and 1 fourth. So the 4 times 2 is just saying if we have two holes and there's four fourths in each, how many total fourths do we have? 4 times 2, that's 8. And the 1 fourth is the 1 fourth that was there all along, and so we add that on at the end. So 4 times 2 plus 1, and that obviously makes 9. And 9 what? 9 fourths. 2 and 1 fourth equals 9 fourths. Here's another example. 5 and 2 thirds. Pause the video and see what you get if you turn 5 and 2 thirds into an improper fraction. Done? Good. So let's go ahead and see what we get here. I'm going to draw the arrows just as a reminder. It's kind of like a road map. Remember we multiply at the bottom, but we add at the top. So if we go Around this way, we'll see 3 times 5 plus 2. 3 times 5 plus 2 thirds. 3 times 5 is 15 plus 2 is 17 thirds. And sometimes people get a little bit confused about multiplying first and then adding. So, just as a visual, just see that the 3 times 5 is simply telling you that we've got 5 holes
and each one of those five holes is made up of three-thirds. So there's your five times three. That gets you your fifteen. And then we have these two-thirds way over here. I had them in timeout. And those two-thirds were already in fraction form. So we just add them on at the end. Five and two-thirds equals seventeen-thirds. All right, you may be really good at this by now. You may have already stopped the video and moved on to other things. But if you need one more practice problem, here it is. Go ahead and pause the video and see what happens when you turn four and two-fifths into an improper fraction. I'll wait. Are you back? Good. So what happens when we turn four and two-fifths into an improper fraction? Let's take a look. I'm going to draw the arrows just as my road map, put the multiply sign, addition at the top, and what do we get? 5 times 4 plus 2 fifths. When we do the arithmetic, we get 5 times 4 is 20 plus 2, 22 fifths. Congratulations, you are an expert in turning mixed fractions into improper fractions.